Hey there! In this video we're going to take a look at how to solve equations of the form ax plus b equals c. What that simply means is there's a number in front of the x and then there's another number that's either being added or subtracted. Now when we look at equations and solving equations it's good to picture them on the two ends of a teeter-totter. If I take the left side of the equation and put it on the left side of my teeter-totter, the right side of the equation is on the right side, I've got what looks like a balanced equation. The equal sign is my balancing point and it's in the middle. So let's take a look at an example and see how we can take an equation that looks like this, ax plus b equals c, and solve it. Here's an example of an equation, 3x plus 15 equals 27. To use the teeter-totter example, if I put the 3x plus 15 on the left, I put the 27 on the right. Now what we're trying to do is, first of all, isolate the variable term, which means I need to get rid of the plus 15. To do that, I'm going to subtract 15. And if I do something on the left of a teeter-totter, I've got to do it on the right in order for it to maintain its balance. So when we do that, this is what we get. Since 15 minus 15 is 0, all that's left on the left side of the teeter-totter is a 3x. When I take 27 minus 15, I get 12. So now on my teeter-totter, I've got 3x on the left and 12 on the right. I have 3 times x, so to undo multiplication, I'm going to divide both sides by 3. When I divide both sides by 3, you can see on the left that I get 3 over 3. Well, 3 divided by 3 is 1. And on the right side, I have 12 divided by 3, which we know is 4. So on the left, I have 1x. On the right, 12 divided by 3 is 4. Now 1x, or 1 times anything, is just itself, so the 1x can be just written as x. And so my solution turns out to be x equals 4. So let's just check that real quick. If I have 3x plus 15 equals 27, let's put 4 in for x. That gives me 3 times 4 plus 15 equals 27. Well, 3 times 4 is 12, and if I take 12 plus 15, I do get 27. So on the left it works out to be a 27, on the right I have a 27. It checks, which means my solution is indeed x equals 4. This problem, x over 4 plus 6 equals 11, is really the same format as ax plus b equals c because x over 4 is the same thing as 1 fourth times x. But when I work it out, I'm going to view the x over 4 as division instead of multiplication. So my first step is to get rid of the plus 6. If I have x over 4 plus 6 equals 11, and I identify the term that holds my variable, my first job is to get rid of this plus 6. If I subtract 6 on the left to keep the equation balanced, I have to subtract it on the right. So then what's left is x over 4. This is 0, and on the right side of the equation, 11 minus 6 is 5. Now I've got x divided by 4. You could think of it as 1 fourth times x, but I'm going to just consider it as x divided by 4. It's division, and to undo division, we multiply. If you want to put the 4 over a 1, you can, or you could just write it as a 4. 4x over 4 is the same as 1x, because 4 divided by 4 is 1. So on the left side, I just have 1x. On the right side, I've got 20, and since 1 times x is just x, my solution is x equals 20.
Here are a couple more examples. If I have negative 3x minus 7 equals 8, I'm going to write it down and I'm going to leave some space next to the 7 because I know I'm going to do something to both sides. Now if I identify the term that includes my variable, my job is to get rid of the minus 7. So to get rid of that, I'm going to add 7 to the left, which means I have to add it to the right. So on the left, a negative 7 and a positive 7 is 0, and all that's left is negative 3x. On the right side, what's left is a 15. Now, if I'm going to divide, I have to divide by the exact number that's in front of the x. So I have to divide both sides by a negative 3. On the left, I get a positive 1x. And on the right, 15 divided by negative 3 is negative 5. So my final answer is x equals negative 5. Over on this problem, I'm going to write it as x over 2 plus 5. I'm going to leave some space, and then I'm going to write my equals negative 6. Once I identify the term that holds my variable, my next job is to isolate that variable term by getting rid of that plus 5. To get rid of a plus 5, we subtract 5. And if I do it on the left, I have to do it on the right. So now on the left side, I've got x over 2 equals negative 11. Now to get x all by itself, I need to deal with this 2 that's being divided. So to undo division, I'm going to multiply both sides by 2. On the left, I've got 2 times x over 2, which is just 1x. And on the right side, I've got a negative 11 times a positive 2, which is negative 22. So my answer is x equals negative 22. Here's an equation that is valuable to look at because it has a fraction involved. As with the other problems, once I identify where my variable is, that's my variable term, and the first thing I want to do is get rid of that plus 7. To do that, I am going to subtract 7 on the left and subtract 7 on the right. So on the left, all that's left is my 2x divided by 3, and all that's left on the right is a 4. Now at this point, I could look at this one of two ways. I could think of it as being division by 3 and multiplication by 2 and use two separate steps to solve it, or I could think of it as a fraction, 2 thirds. If I look at it as a fraction, then to undo the fraction and get 1x, I need to multiply by the reciprocal of the 2 thirds. And if I do it on the left, I must do the same thing on the right. On the left, I get 6x over 6. On the right, if I put this over 1, I get 12 divided by 2. So to finish this problem, anything over itself is 1. So I've got 1x. And over here, 12 divided by 2 is 6. So you can see that in this type of problem there are generally two steps. First you have to add or subtract to get the x term isolated and then you're going to uh, multiply or divide to finish the problem.